Get the swimsuits and sunscreen ready. If you thought today was hot, just wait until tomorrow. I'm tracking our chances for record-breaking heat this weekend, including triple-digit temperatures. A problem only getting worse. You just have to be alert and aware in a way you didn't have to be before. Tonight, we're going in-depth on homelessness. And I just didn't know where to go or what to do. The factors behind it and the differing approaches to getting Coloradans the help they need. This is an issue that we can, we have the resources to end if we want to. Dozens of horses rescued. A lot of them have pretty critical quality of life concerns, which just means that these horses are suffering and are in pain. Tonight, how you can help save these beautiful animals on their road to recovery. First tonight, take a look at this view of the Denver skyline as the sun set on another hot day in Colorado. And if you thought today was warm, just wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson is tracking the potential for record-breaking heat this weekend. Mike? We hit 96 today in Denver before some scattered cooling thunderstorms came in to give us that beautiful sky shot early this evening. 90 at Fort Collins, 92 at Greeley, 95 out at Ray, 97 at Pueblo and Grand Junction. Currently, temperatures are really comfortable. That's the one benefit of being on the high plains. It does get to be a lot nicer in the evening, just in the 70s. We do have a heat advisory, northeast Colorado coming up for tomorrow. Now, if you're seeing any lightning to the south, that's the storms down here over Teller County and down around the Pikes peak area. They are diminishing and here are our weather headlines coming up. Clearing skies overnight. Highs are going to be 98 to 103 both tomorrow and Sunday. Dry through Sunday. Then it does turn cooler next week with a better chance of showers and thunderstorms. But the severe heat with record breaking temperatures that's coming up tomorrow and Sunday. All right. Thank you, Mike. With the extreme heat expected in the metro over the weekend, the city of Denver is opening all recreation centers as cooling stations. Denver Public Library branches also will be available as indoor reprieve from this heat. So city officials say be sure to check the hours of operations for your local rec center and library before you head out. If you have to be outside in the heat, there are several things you can do to stay cool. Drink more water than usual. Pay attention to cramping as it may be a sign of heat related illness. Wear and frequently reapply sunscreen. Place your or pace your activity while you're taking frequent breaks and wear loose, lightweight, light colored clothing. Excel Energy is offering suggestions for keeping your home cool and your energy bill low. Keep blinds and curtains closed to keep heat out. Make sure any exterior doors are closed to keep air conditioning inside. Run ceiling fans counterclockwise. Ceiling fans use less energy than AC and can help keep rooms cool. And have your AC coils clean to improve efficiency and cut down on energy costs. And not everyone has a home to escape to when these temperatures soar. According to the Associated Press, advocates estimate the homeless make up half of heat-related deaths in the U.S. And tonight we are going in-depth on the issue of homelessness, of course, a growing problem here in Colorado and nationwide. And we want to make an important distinction. The vast majority of those experiencing homelessness are not those you're seeing living on the streets. But tonight's focus are those experiencing visible homelessness. Here's Denver 7's Rob Harris. Give me a clap for the setup. Our conversation starts on a bench in Cheeseman Park in Denver. This park, this park was my home. Will Bengert wants to talk to us, and he wants a conversation to happen here. I would sleep up here over there underneath that tree. Many, many, many tears have been shed on these blades of grass. Today, he's clear-eyed, thoughtful, and sober. A person he says his former self, sleeping under a tree, wouldn't even recognize. I had no morals. I would do whatever I had to do to get through that day. Addiction followed him nearly his whole life, ever since his dad would pay him in beer for washing the car in sixth grade. By the time he was an adult, he was hooked on meth and committing crimes to fund his addiction. In 2016, I ended up going to prison for four years. Got a vehicle looting with injury, two drug charges, um, two grand theft autos, and a second degree burglary. I paroled to a sober living when I got out. That piece of his parole ended up being key. Kicking his addiction and finding a support system has kept him off the streets and on a better path. 
Now he works to help others find the same recovery. It's you know that person inside is just breaking and dying and crumbling down, but yet their pride won't let them say anything. Will Bengert found his way out, but numbers tell us more people are finding their way into the harmful cycles of homelessness. Both the stresses of the pandemic and the affordable housing crisis in Denver have forced many out of their homes. According to the Metro Denver Homeless Initiative, the number of people who reported first-time homelessness doubled from 2020 to 2021. It's not only the numbers that tell us that the problem of homelessness is getting worse. The people living downtown are telling us that too. You walk out the door and instantly feel the energy. <gasps> When's the last time you came downtown and heard kids screaming and laughing? It's just hearing and seeing things you're not used to hearing and seeing in Denver. This is Lori Greenlee. She lives downtown and is a member of Citizens for a Safe and Clean Denver, which advocates for proactive policing and enforcement of tenting bans downtown. You just have to be alert and aware in a way you didn't have to be before. One of my client's daughters lives in the Coloradan, and her golden retriever came home from a dog walk one day with a hypodermic needle stuck in his paw. During our interview, in the middle of the day, in the middle of Union Station, we see an apparent drug deal happen right in front of our camera. That's why the citizens for a safe and clean Denver are pushing for a bold and controversial policy, forced rehabilitation, like Will Bengert had in the form of his parole. It may seem forceful, but that's not how we treat one another. We don't just let people die in a, a doorway. Ultimately, the message is we're a compassionate city. But other experts disagree and say that getting people into housing, regardless of their addiction, is the first and most important step. As a social worker, housing is a, is a human right. This is Katie Calhoun with the Center of Housing and Homelessness Research at the University of Denver. Housing is the response to homelessness. There's a lot of talk around this issue of substance use. It's just as likely that substance use is a response to the traumatic experience of homelessness than it led to homelessness. Calhoun advocates for a policy called Housing First, which gets people off the street and into homes with no strings attached. She says the process may take longer, but the positive outcomes will be more likely to stick. This is an issue that we can, we have the resources to end if we want to. Back in Cheeseman Park, Will Benger and I are talking face to face. Something he says didn't happen very often when this park was his home. I'm guessing that is damaging to your self-confidence. It's very damaging. I would hold doors for, uh, you know, ladies, you know, elderly ladies, or anybody really. And, and they would speed up as they walk past me. I'd be like, hey, and they start running off this way or that way, you know. You can't even give somebody a compliment. And as it turns out, it's, it's terrible. That's something that both lived experience and research tell us is invaluable as we work to end homelessness in Denver. Human connection with our neighbors who feel avoided and ignored. It doesn't cost money. It doesn't cost a lot of time. You don't have to open up your house so they can take a shower. But there's always something that you can do. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris. Great work tonight from Rob Harris. We have an update tonight to a story that Denver 7 has been following for the past several days. We told, uh, we're told that one of the elevators is now working at the Columbine Towers. This is near Federal and Colorado Avenue. Residents of this 15-story building told us last weekend both building elevators had been out of service for more than two weeks and at least one elderly woman was badly hurt after falling on concrete stairs. The building's management tells Denver 7 they are now working on getting the other elevator up and running. The Adams County Sheriff says some residents are experiencing a 911 outage. This is affecting people in the eastern part of Adams County with phone numbers beginning with 622. The county says the outage will not be completely resolved until tomorrow morning. In the meantime, people experiencing the outage will need to call 303-288-1535 to report emergencies. Dozens of horses in need of help tonight after they're found severely neglected. Tonight, Denver 7 CB Cotton shows us how you can help them on their road to recovery. Just because they're up and walking around does not mean that they have a quality of life. It does not mean that they are not suffering. These horses hung on even when it hurt. Horses have no other option other than to continue going on, regardless of whether they're in immense amounts of pain. And now Alex Wilde is helping to ease the pain. It's a good scratch. I'm an animal cruelty investigator. So we received a call. 
it was a welfare concern for some horses on a property, which initiated an investigation. And through the course of that investigation, we negotiated the surrender of 80 horses. This is probably the largest group of just concentrated long-term neglect, pain, and suffering in a group of horses that I've probably ever seen. Still, there's hope. Since Thursday, the 80 horses have been gradually making their way through here, the Dumb Friends League Harmony Equine Center. And one of them even gave birth after arriving. They come to us and they receive um, the treatment that they need, whether that's medical or behavioral or both. There's promise that some of these horses can recover. They have unlimited access to food and water. That in of itself is kind of what keeps horses pretty happy. And from there, our vet's treating anybody that she can treat and going through and doing the best that she can to keep everybody comfortable and pain-free. But right now, many of them have difficulty walking. Others are severely emaciated. Unfortunately, it's just because these horses have been failed by a lot of people for a really long time. The goal is for adequate vet care and training to make some of these horses one day adoptable. Getting there will cost thousands. Just feeding them is going to be a massive bill and then all of the veterinary care, not just from our vet, but also from any secondary vets that will come in to assist us. Which is why community support can make all the difference. It's going to be a long journey and we need as much support as we can. These horses have hung on. And now you, Colorado, can help them heal. With photojournalist Will Peterson, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. Thank you, CB. And here's how you can help. Go to the Denver 7 Gives page at thedenverchannel.com. On the drop-down menu, select Help Neglected Horses. Denver 7 is a proud media partner of the Dumb Friends League and its mission to help animals in Colorado. As far as criminal charges, investigators say they could not comment, citing an active investigation. Parking at DIA is about to get more expensive. The new prices you'll have to pay and when they'll go into effect. Heat advisory for tomorrow. Not much rain expected for the weekend. There will be a new goalie between the pipes for the Avs Stanley Cup defense. Tonight, Joe Sackick opening up on his new netminder. 